Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Cube at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibond.org. Go to siliconangle.tv to check all of our live footage. Go to wikibond.org to get all the free research. Uh, again, this is theCUBE where we broadcast live from the events that matter. And our next guest is Eric Van Vanzuela, uh, business development for Full360. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Appreciate thanks it. for having Eric, me. So, uh, big data is a discussion. So we were just talking prior to going on about Amazon the Cloud, and you mentioned the word DevOps, and I'm like, oh yeah, we love DevOps. We, we think DevOps, uh, you know, having developers work with the cloud is, is the biggest thing um, uh, that happened in, in generations in terms of productivity. So, uh, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thanks, so, thanks for having How me. are you using the cloud to deliver data and value? Tell us. Well, um, you know, we're, we're early adopters of, of cloud and both, both Vertica, you know, with, uh, with analytics and BI. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been partnered up with, uh, with, with Vertica since, uh, since a delivery that was given at MIT. Our CTO actually participated in that, created a relationship, I think this was back in 07. So we were immediately part of the, the beta test team at that time, and since then we've been you know, running like crazy. But the, but the interesting thing is that when, when Vertica you know, was, was released, that's right around the time that Amazon started coming out with their, with their cloud offering as well. So the, the two married well together and we immediately started building, started developing yeah. and started doing things like that. So what do you think about the Vertica situation? We'll go with Amazon in a second. Let's talk about Vertica. Obviously the results we're hearing from their customers are pretty significant. Large scale, big, mm -hmm. big time customers using hyperscale yep. was running with Vertica. Um, you surprised by that? You psyched by that? You've been there from the beginning, kind of present at creation, if you will. What's your take on their success? And well, I'll, I'll kind of give you my, you know, my take on it, you know, purely from, you know, my my base of knowledge, which doesn't, it's not a huge pool, you know, it's not a deep pool that I dive into. But um, it, it seems to me that, you know, now that there's a place for tremendous amounts of data, that they will continue, you know, people will continue growing out their data requirements. Right, is, is if, as long as there's no restrictions, that those, you know, those, those bits of data, those data sets will continue to grow. And then there will always be a, a reason to, to, you know, to analyze those things. But uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at all surprised by that. I think, I think it actually makes sense. You know, I think uh, you know, part, of, part, of the, uh, part, of the, part of the process getting to this point was the adoption of it. And now that it's easy to, to, you know, from our perspective, just purely with the cloud, it's really easy to get a stack up and running. It's really easy to get uh, something uh, up and running where you can load some data and actually review your data in real time, you know? And so, just based off of that, there's no limitations anymore. So, if you have a proliferation of people that can actually do this stuff, yeah, it, 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 it makes sense to me. Dave, that it would Dave is a skeptic grow. on self-service BI, so where, is, where do you see that going? Because that seems to be, people want business intelligence tools. I want it. To be less geeky right. and be yeah. like a search but engine. It, 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 there's a gap, right, between where we are today and where we want to be. So, yeah, how are we closing that gap? You know, that, that's an interesting question. I mean, I think, I think um, you know, from our perspective, we're, I think we're doing a good job of, of building the technology, building the infrastructure, making it very easy for more people to get tied to it, to use it, to spin things up. And also, you know, in addition to that, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not magic, you know? I mean, there, there is a level of respect that needs to be given to those platforms to keep them up and running. So I think as you continue building bigger and better platforms, that that, that will eventually close the gap, right? But if you keep creating tremendous amounts of data, that's also, uh, a place where you can put that data and analyze it quickly, irrespective of the size of it, that's also closing the gap. Eric, how much of that is, <clears throat> is closing that gap is technology versus sort of training and process and the like? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good question. So early, early on, I would say even, even just a couple years ago, um, a lot of the work that we were doing was purely education, right? I mean, we were teaching people that you know, 
building these platforms in the cloud is secure, that it is efficient, and now with a bigger adoption around that, we're not having those conversations anymore. Now it's about you know, how, do, how do we get to that point much quicker? You know, so these solutions are actually created and developed a lot faster than they, than they were in, in the past. I'm, I'm not sure if I answered so yeah, you, that. You, so but you brought up another point. So you think people are through the knot hole in terms of the pedantic argument of security and privacy yeah. and yes. Uh, I mean, I've always said, John, John, you can vouch for this. I think the cloud is more secure than than the vast majority of on-premise deployments. I agree. And, I agree. And, and, and so, but yet we still have people coming on the cube saying, "No, no, we don't do the cloud." Now, yeah, maybe that's I, don't, I don't understand the hesitation. Or, I mean, you start digging into that, right? You start asking them, "What? What is your hesitation?" I mean, it. it it, it can't be a cost, you, you can't be, uh, it, it can't be cost, right? Because I think the cloud is actually proven to reduce a lot of the operating cost for on-premise, right? So I, I kind of think that, that part of it might be from, when you, when you look at on-premise and how to manage and run and build on-prem, there's a, there's a different shift in the way that you, that you think in order to get that up and running in the cloud. I mean, it's not, it, it doesn't directly translate, right? The way that you do things on premise is certainly not going to be the way that you're going to do things in the cloud, right? So that, the, the, it could be an unknown, right? It could be, you know, maybe there's just a gap there. I, I've, I've kind of found that. I mean, once I've started educating people on certain things that you can do in the cloud and cannot do, you know, that, the that, about that sort of lifts a little bit. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I, 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 you know, the thing that makes DevOps so powerful is the fact that speed is a game, right? So like, right now the big trend that you're seeing in the startup community and in the data community is what they're calling the full stack startups and the, or, or integrated stacks or integrated uh, value chains, if you will. The old model of siloed you know, approaches right. is kind of be getting busted down. We're, we're really busting down the silos for the first time in history and changing that market. So like, if that's the case, things like cloud should make BI as easy as using Google search. Right, and, and you know, building those infrastructures, I mean, like you were mentioning with DevOps in, in, in general, I mean, with, with a click of a script, I mean, now you've got an entire stack up and running and it's tuned, right? You know, you've, you've worked with the operating system to tune it as, as best possible to operate with this, uh, you know, Vertica instance, right? So you know exactly how that's going to work. And so, what we've been able to do is that as changes or additions or updates or things that are, that are needed to be done around Vertica, we just have to, we, we, we leverage DevOps and we only have to make that, you know, make that change or make that, make that addition to, to our scripts just one time. And we know that we can now provide this to all our customers, right? So it's not as if we're starting from, you know, from scratch or from ground zero each time building up from there. So, <clears throat> I mean, I tend to agree with you, and John, I'll tell you again, I'm sort of a cloud bigot, but I want to play <laughs> devil's advocate. Uh, so, yeah. why is renting cheaper? Why is it less expensive than, than owning? You would think at some scale, Zynga mm -hmm. tested this, I'm not sure it worked out the way they wanted to. Uber seems to be going in a similar direction. Right. But is it just better? Is it more sort of getting out of that, what you know, AWS calls the non-differentiated heavy lifting? Yep. Um, can you replicate what you're doing uh, in the cloud on premise. I mean, you, you're from a, you're a long time consultant, yeah. right? You got good background there. If, if you were one of these enterprise guys trying to hang on to the past, mm -hmm. <laughs> could you replicate that capability? It's much easier going from on prem to the cloud, going back from the cloud to on prem. <laughs> not, not, no, it, it's a, that's, that's a, that's a huge challenge. I mean, that's because of the mindset, opinion. the DevOps culture. Yeah, but there, but there's also some limitation, right? I mean, you, the, the environment that scale uh, scales there, yeah. the environments are going to be completely different too. You know, one thing you can almost guarantee is that Amazon's going to be exactly the same every time you you work there. You know, different now on-prem is always going to be you know kind of a challenge. So taking taking one of our scripts, uh, let, let, you know, just bringing this as a uh, as an example, is that if we've developed a script, we know exactly that that's going to run. We know 100% of the way that it's going to run and operate and behave inside the cloud. We, you know, in order to take that and apply it to an on-prem, we would have to then understand how that on-premise network and how all of that works, modify this to make it work, right? So, if once you go forward, I mean, there's no point in, in going back, but. Um, 
Although some have tried. Yeah, <clears throat> some have right. tried, yeah. I mean, then, and, and I, think, I think if you look back a couple years ago, there was probably some companies that, that, that started in the cloud to do development, you know, to do test dev because it was a really cheap place. They didn't have to procure hardware. They didn't have to have these big capex, to, you know, these big capex purchases in order, in order to just prove a concept to do some test dev. Um, and I think they started those things with full intention of coming back in on prem, but as that's you know the cloud stuff has actually grown, it makes more sense for them just to, you know, when we talk when we talk to our customers, we always throw that out as an option from the very beginning. If we're going to build in the cloud, it might you might want to consider keeping it in the cloud, you know, taking taking that off the table of going back to on-prem. Eric, let's just keep it in the cloud. I want to ask you a question that I asked a sure. lot of folks. If you could ask, if this is more for you to think about <clears throat> from a customer standpoint, your customers, what is the biggest thing that, that they're looking for? And then the specific question is, if they could ask their data anything, mm -hmm. what would be the number one thing they'd want to ask their data? Ask the data. What's the top level number one thing that most customers want to ask of their data? You know, so we, we cross a lot of verticals. I mean, we're in, we're in a, uh, we have some airlines, we have some big games, we have quite a few banks. They're all going to ask a you know, different question, but I mean, I think it's just about getting down to the, to the nitty gritty, right? I mean, it's about making a, an educated decision with intent that's based off of fact and data. I, mean, I, I, think, I think everybody's going to be asking that question, how they digest it and how they use it at that point. Um, you know, I guess that depends on We were management. talking earlier, yes, uh, in the previous interview with Peter Fishman from Myanmar about A-B testing, and you know, we, we were kind of kicking it around. Obviously, depending on how you look at it, it's, it's good. We had Eric Schwartz on Twitter just commenting to me, the vast majority of A-B testing I've, I've seen done is utterly useless, mostly low base rate problems. Sample hmm. size, and then Peter's talking about other analytics. Are you seeing the myth of big data and business intelligence being skewed by the hope that there's something there? Or are you seeing real actionable insights with the, with the staff and the technology in place to make that happen? Where are we in that continuum, being nirvana, the holy grail, uh, <laughs> the people are peaked in talent, the things are fully scalable, the data's all ready, all the tooling's there, versus kind of the, the dream, are we, are, we, are, we, are we being sold the dream? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think infrastructure's there. I think that's available, you know. I think that we can fully leverage that. I think the expertise is there in terms of what it is that you want to do with that, you know, with all those, with that huge volume of data. Um, I don't, I don't, th I think, I think we're definitely getting a lot further away from from a pipe dream and and vapor than uh, than we think. But it, I mean, that's 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 definitely moving quickly, right? I think by this time next year at this conference, we'll we'll definitely see see a different landscape. I think we're definitely going to see you know, a lot more people getting into the to big data, either consulting or infrastructure in some way or another. So the name Full360 is interesting, um, particularly because you know, in, back in the day of you know, the, the heartland of BI and, and enterprise data warehouse, <coughs> a lot of the marketing was around a, a full 360 degree view of your business. Uh, right. And most people would argue that that never lived up, that, that reality never lived up to the expectation. Correct. And that's fair, right? Yep. Um, yet you guys chose that name, and you talk about BI and DW for the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're, you, we talked about DevOps, you're clearly doing things differently. But are you finding that you're adding more business value, that it's really not sort of traditional BI and, and EDW? Or is it just you're doing that better? Well, I, I think we're definitely taking a different approach. Um, to, to how to do it, and I, I think that, I think conceptually, we're doing it better, right? I think, I think we're fully using the technology out there to its maximum, you know. Uh, Vertica, for example, you know, the, the cloud, for example, I think we're pushing the limits as to what those two technologies can do independently and then actually together, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I don't know, that's, that's kind of a tough, that's kind of a tough answer. Well, so, um so essentially, are you fulfilling the promise <laughs> that, that was laid out there? <laughs> I think we're getting, I, I, yeah, I think, I think we are. I mean, I think we're getting, I think we're getting close. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're listening to our customers in a way and building what it is that I think that they, they're asking. I think once they get closer to it and more knowledgeable on you know, what big data is or how to manage it or how to use it, 
that's where things really start to grow. Right? So you mentioned a couple of in industries that are you know, traditional airlines and banks and then the new, new sort of emerging big games industry. Taking the airlines and banks, when we talk to people in our community about what they're doing with data warehousing, and even if you go back sort of before the big data meme, mm -hmm. um, they would say things like, oh, it's our infrastructure, this is so painful. Mm -hmm. um, we're chasing chips. Every time Intel comes up with a new chip, we got to buy it because right. these things are so slow. Um, ingesting data is like a snake swallowing a basketball. It's just, they just describe this painful <laughs> patchwork of endless hell. <laughs> There's another expression I won't say. One of my favorites. So, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm asking is, 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 is that changing because of your processes and because of the cloud and maybe a little bit of vertica in there? Or has something else changed? Is it this big data? Is it Hadoop that you're injecting into it? Is it, you know, has, have costs just hit a tipping point? I'm trying to, f I'm trying to understand what's different besides just the cloud and, right. and your excellence, your yeah. expertise, and squeezing as much as you can out of the technology. I, I, th I think it's a combination of all those things. Yeah. I think if you if you view it in a certain way and and you're open to to expanding upon it, and the infrastructure is there and it's somewhat limitless, you know, with the cloud, um, you know that like I said, that's that's a really that's a really good partnership. That's a good marriage there. But then when you add on expertise and a lot of uh, you know. Uh, you know, things that have broken that we've had to fix over a period of time. I think when you combine it all, you know, now you're, uh, now you're just focusing on how to, how to digest that data, right? If you have the pipes big enough, if you create them big enough, now you can actually get the data loaded in and then it's about, it's about digesting it. Now if you have a columnar type database like Vertica that can do the analytics very quickly, that part is now taken care of, right? And then if you have the expertise and the knowledge to put it all together, I mean, I, th I, don't, I don't think it's just one thing. I don't think Vertica in and of itself is solving sure. all the problems or the cloud is solving all the problems. I think it's, it's definitely a you know, combination of everything put together. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the, sort of the, we've been talking a lot about the technologies and sort of digging in and, and playing devil's advocate on some of the cloud stuff, and that's all well and good. And it sounds like most of your customers are way past that, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of what you told us before. So where are they? I mean, t take us through a typical engagement. Somebody comes to you, they got a problem, they, they see an opportunity. Talk about <clears throat> sort of the business drivers and maybe even give an example. Um, uh, you know, a customer, a typical customer is somebody that um, has, is, is very on, you know, they, they're, everything is on-prem and they're interested in the cloud, right? So they know that there's this technology out there, right? And then they have a requirement for managing their data, either it's in disparate silos or maybe it's just growing so much that, uh, so quickly that they just can't get a hold of it and they see moving into the future that it's just going to continue, right? It's just going to continue to get bigger and bigger. Um, that, that is a, that's the typical customer. So they would, they would generally come to us and we would understand their business, understand their data, um, we we offer a product where what we call it, it's a what we call it is a quick start, and what that means is that it's it's it, it's similar to a proof of concept, but we're not really proving any concepts at this point. Everything's really been proven. We're just quickly trying to get them up and running and, and started on the you know on the cloud or with Vertica or with big data. Um, so what we do is we take a sample set of their data, load it in, and then give them some reports so they can start reviewing their data. And it makes sense at this point because it is their own data. It's not some canned, made-up data, right? So from there, once all of that groundwork is done, that's when, that's when all the creativity starts to come out from, you know, from the customer. Okay, now all of these things have been done. You know, it's easier for us. Now we can see our data. It's not as complex as we thought. You know, removing the unknowns as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. That's 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 generally then they're hooked. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you have a customer that has quite a few unknowns and you can remove those, you know, then you're then you're then you're pressing forward. You know, it's just opening up to a different way of thinking. And, and some of your customers are putting so-called personal information into the cloud. Personal information as yeah, in, uh, for their customers. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's. It's up to them, all right? I mean, they, they have to decide what, what data they want to track on their customers, but of course. And, and um, I have a sort of a question about AWS. So the, the Vertica is in the AWS marketplace, or is it kind of bring your own license, or how does that It, it is work? in the marketplace. They, there's a community edition that's there that will, um, 
uh, allow you to spin up um, Vertica in the cloud. Our, our stack, the ones that we've developed, is different from what is available on the marketplace. So if you were to come to us, we would use our own scripts in order to stand up that stack for you. So it, 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 it's, uh, it's kind of been through, the, through months or years of development in order to get a finely tuned operating system, tuned Vertica, and you know, connect it on AWS. It's, it's, it's everything. So I transact to. that through full 360. Right. Right. Not, and, and you take care of the, you, you, you're my heat shield to AWS. I don't yep. need to hire developers or anything exactly. else. And exactly. I don't get a monthly bill from Amazon, I get a monthly bill from you guys. Or you'll, you'll get a monthly okay. bill from Amazon for their services as well, just, just okay. for the usage, that's transparent pass through. Yep. Um, you know, we, we charge for the, for the managed services on a month to month basis. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, the way to look at it is that you know, we're, we're not only um, you know, taking over the, the, the managed aspect of keeping Vertica up and running in the cloud and all of that, it's really an insurance policy, right? I mean, if you, if you really think about it, mm -hmm. you know, we, we guarantee that that is always going to be available, that it's always going to be up and running, it's always going to be up to date, you know, that if, if there are some, you know, data lags, uh, latency, query issues, all of those things we address for you. So, <clears throat> you have a very intimate relationship with, with Amazon, right, presumably, mm -hmm. right? Pretty close. What do you think about things like auditing and right? Do you, do you they they're not going to let you go on site, but you send you send your auditors in, or do you interact with their auditors? And uh, do do, you, do your customers say, well, we, we trust their security, but their security is different than ours? Yeah. How do you deal with that? You know, squaring that circle. Well, I mean, obviously Amazon spends quite a bit of money on making sure that those audits pass, right? That they right. pass muster. So we we don't really focus on that too much. I mean, if our customers want to know about you know, Amazon specifically, you know, we reach out to our partner network and have them answer those questions or we'll point them over to the Okay, you know, and that's not an issue in your, in your customer it hasn't base. Been. It not. used to be, it used to be. Okay. Early on it used to be, but now not, not, not so much. Uh, okay, now. Eric, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Appreciate it, obviously Amazon Web Services really showed the way for innovation in startups. Certainly IBM is trying to match that uh, with EMC and VMware and Pivotal, trying to build their clouds. Everyone's building their clouds, so it's just the beginning uh, yep. of all the action. So appreciate your insights here on theCUBE, uh, business intelligence, big data is driving, ton of innovations and enabling entrepreneurs to be successful, not just big companies. So we're excited to bring you, the, bring you that action. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Go to crowdchat.net, check out the live chat we're having in our engagement container. And on Twitter, I'm at Furrier and Dave's at, at D Vellante. Check us out, we'll, we'll be watching. So we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.